Baruchim Havoyim. Welcome everyone. We're about to begin Be'ezras Hashem together in Dav Ches Amid Aleph, the last word on the Amud. Last time we discussed in Amud a pillar in the Rishus Harabim. If it's only nine Tfachim high and four Tfachim wide, it's given the status of a, as a Rishus Harabim. That people who are in the Rishus Harabim who are traveling, they can easily put their loads on top of this Amud. And therefore, such a Tashmish is convenient for them whereby it's considered to be part of the Rishus HaRabim. The Gemara asks, what about a hole inside of the ground? A guma, if it's only nine tfachim deep, does it also have the status of Rishus HaRabim? Or not, or it's considered to be a Karmelis, because it's nine tfachim deep and four tfachim wide. The Gemara brings a Machlokis, and Rava maintains that it is not Consider to be part of the Rishus Harabim. Ask the Gemara now, Esve, from the following Braiso, Niskaven Lishbois, Rishus Harabim, Vihiniach Eruvoi Babor. If a person wants to make an Eruv, Techumim, the Torah, or rabbinically, it's prohibited from walking 2,000 Amois from a person's place of residence on Shabbos. So therefore, if a person wants to extend that 2,000 Amos range, he can put an Eruv where he has food 2,000 Amos away and from there walk an additional 2,000 Amos, entire 4,000 Amos from where he is standing. Thereby, his, his additional residence, his, or his new residence rather, is really 2,000 Amos from the place that he will then walk from. So. The Gemara brings a brisa that says if a person wants to, to make his residence in the Rishus HaRabim 2,000 Amos away and he puts his Eruv inside of a boar, inside of a pit, says the brisa, If this boar is higher than 10 Tfachim, then it's a good Eruv. If it's lower, l- lower than Ten tfachim, then it's not a good Eruv. Ask the Gemara, Hey Chidami, what is the case in this Braisa? Ilema bebor di isbe asara ulamala. If you're going to say that this bor is ten tfachim and higher, the daloi v'oisbe, that he is raising the food and he's putting it in. Ulamato de tatoi oisbe, and he's lowering and putting it in. Says the Gemara, Mali lamala, Mali lamata. What does it make a difference? Lamala lamata. Hu b'makom echad ve'eruva b'makom acher hu. He's in one place in the Rishus Harabim, and the food is in the boar, which is asar tfachim, which is the Rishus Hayachid, whereby he doesn't have access to this food. In order to be in good eruv to chumin, he has to have access to the food. And therefore, over here, it's not going to be a good Eruv. Says the Gemara, Elola bebor de les be asara. We're talking about a boar that is not ten tfachim deep. The Ketani, and it teaches Eruv e Eruv, that it's a good Eruv. Mean to say, the ratio of the Mish of the Brisa to Lamala me asara tfachim. Is in contrast to which it says later on, Lamata me asar tvachim. Lamata me asar tvachim means deeper than the tenth tvachim. That's where the bottom of the bore of this pit is. But Lamala me asar tvachim means that there's not tenth tvachim deep in this bore. So it says over here, then Eruve Eruv. Alma says the Gemara, Tashmish ayedei hadechak, Shmei Tashmish. A Tashmish that is forced, that is not a convenient Tashmish. Not a convenient usage of this place, in this case the boar, is considered to be a tashmish, whereby it's part of the Rishus Harabim. So the Kashan Rava, who maintained that it's not considered to be part of the Rishus Harabim, because it's not a convenient place to do your to do your tashmish, to, to use that place for putting your things, because you'd have to bend down. Says the Gemara Menayin. I'm sorry, and now the Gemara answers, Vizim Mishani Lei, who the Eruva be Karmelis. Sometimes Rava answered that it's he and the boar, which is both situated in a Karmelis. 
and therefore there wouldn't be a problem of accessing that food from the, the air from the boar, because the boar is a Carmelis, and he's in a Carmelis. Ah, I asked the Gemara the obvious question. Then how does this fit into the Lushan over here? It said in this Brisa that he's Neskav and Lish boys by Rishus Arabim, which is much that he was situated in Rishus Arabim. Says the Gemara of Lefisha Eina Rishus Hayochid. The Kavana was to exclude a Rishus Hayochid because if the boar was indeed a Rishus Hayochid, it didn't make a difference. If this place rather was a Rishus Hayochid and the boar, whether it was a Rishus Hayochid or a Carmelis, it always has a din as a Rishus Hayochid. Because any boar in the Rishus HaYochid is considered to be a Rishus HaYochid. So when it says Rishus HaRam, it only comes to exclude a Rishus HaYochid. In this case, we're talking about a Carmelis. Vizimnin, Mishani Lei, and other times Rav would answer the following. Hu be Rishus HaRabim. The price is talking about when he's situated in the Rishus HaRabim. Ve'eruvoi be Carmelis. And his Eruv is situated in the Carmelis. Ve'rebihi. And this is according to Rebbe that he would, yes, have access from the Carmelis, where the Eruv is, into the Rishus Arabim, where he is situated. Why? The Omar kol dover shehu mishum shvus, lo gozu alo ben There are things that are shvus, that are rabbinically prohibited. And Rabbi said that those things are not prohibited during ben HaShemoshos. They're only prohibited when it's Vadai Shabbos. And Ben HaShemoshos is a time of Suffolk Shabbos. That's between the time, let's say, of sunset and Seis HaKochovim. So since he does have access to the Eruv in the onset of Shabbos, during the Ben HaShemoshos, according to Rabbi, that's the opinion that Rav is following, thereby he does have access to the Eruv, and it's a valid Eruv. And indeed, it's the Carmelis, and not a Rishus Harabim. Don't say that I'm only pushing you, your proof off. I'm specifically saying this. I'm, I'm saying this definitively. This not, and I'll prove it to you from the following Mishnah. If there was a pool of water, let's say you have on the lake shore where there's a lot of sand, and on top of the sand is floating some water. That's a rekak mayim. Urishus harabim mahaleches boy. And the populace travels in that area through it. Hazarek letoicha dalad amos chayiv. If a person were to then throw an object dalad amos onto this place, this area of the rekak, chayiv. Because as a din of Rishus harabim. The Kamohu Rakak Mayim, how much is it considered to be a, sha- a, a, a pool of water for it to be considered to be part of the Rishus Harabim? Pachos mi Asar Tfochim, less than Asar Tfochim. Urakak Mayim, Shirishus Harabim, Mahaleches Boy, Hazar Litoicho, Dalar Amos Chayef. And a person who throws an object, Dalar Amos, onto this Rakak Mayim is going to be Chayef. Chatos. So we pay attention to the Lushan of this Braisa, of this Mishnah rather, that it really is doubled over. It really repeats itself, the Sefer which is already presented in the Reisha. So the Gemara addresses this. Bishlama Rekak, Rekak, Trezimni. The fact that it says Rekak two times in the Mishnah doesn't bother us. Because Chad bi Yemois HaChamo, the Chad bi Yemois HaGeshomim. The fact that it repeats itself is not a problem because one type of rakak is referring to during the rainy days, while the other rakak talks about during the summer days. V'tzrichan, we need both of them. Di ashma in If we only heard that this is true during the summer, the sunny days, the avidi inchi likrue nafshaihu. I would say it's because people want to cool off their feet, so they walk into this rakak of mayim, and therefore it's considered to be. A valid Rishus Harabim. Ava biyemos ha Gishomim ik emoloi. But during the days of rain, I would say not. Vi Ashmon biyemos ha Gishomim agav dematnif mikri venochis. I would say during the rainy days because, anyways, their boots are dirty. So then, anyways, they're going to go in to this Rekak Mayim. 
They have no problem walking in it. I would say not during the sunny days. Therefore, we need both Rekach to teach me on both the sunny days as well as on the rainy days. Why does it repeat itself, Gabi, the Hiluch, by the walking? That seems to be superfluous. Is it not coming to teach us Hiluch, Aidei Hadachak, Shmei Hiluch? That a walking, right, even if it's Aidei Hadachak, is considered to be a good Hiluch. But Tashmish, the deal could be Tashmish, the usage of that area, of that area in area, Aidei Hadachak, but if you do make a usage that is going to be a force type of usage, it's not going to be convenient usage, that is not considered to be a good Tashmish Shmamina. And therefore, Rav proves himself that anything that is a Tashmish, Aidei Hadachak, Lo Tashmish. And therefore, a Guma, a hole that is nine Tfachim deep, since it's inconvenient, it's considered to be a Tashmish, Aidei Hadachak, Lo Tashmish. And therefore, it doesn't have the Din as a Rishus Harabim. Om Rav Yehuda, a new, what seems to be an unrelated din. Rav says the following, Rav Yehuda says the following, Hai Ziriza Dekani, this Ziriza Dekani, these are a bundle of reeds, Rama Vizakfe, Rama Vizakfe. If a person, he picks up one end, and then he tumbles it over, he picks up the other end, and he tumbles it over. As if he picks it up and as if he's rolling it over. Loi mechayiv ad the okar He's not chayiv until he makes an akira, until he picks the entire thing up where both sides are going to be up. Now, this is in contrast to a case where if he would take the chavila of kanim, the bundles of kanim, and he would drag them dalad amos, then he would be chayiv. Aye. One end is still on the ground. He didn't make what seems to be an Akira picking it up, a lifting up from the ground. The answer is that since both ends are moving, that's considered to be an Akira, where he be chayiv to make a, a Havara Dalad Amaz in Rishus HaRabim. But over here, one end of this bundle is always going to be on the ground. So although he's picking up one end, the other end is on the ground. When he then throws it to the other side, and then picks up the other end. The other end is on the ground. So therefore, he'll never be chayiv for being making a havar for Dalad Amos and Shus HaRabim. Omar Mar. Now we bring back a statement. This is the latter part of the b'risa of the Dalad Rishu Yos in Shabbos that we brought on Dalad Vav and Aleph. Omar Mar. Odom oimed al ha'iskupa noitel mi balabayis. If a person stands on iskupa, we said in iskupa is this platform, if you will, that extends out and is higher than, let's say, the bias where he where he's standing, and it's the same level as the bias, but higher than the ground level between where he's standing and the entrance of the street that has iskupa this area, which is a little bit of a platform, like a, 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 a large step. So it says, He's able to then stand on this iskupa, and he's able to take from the balabayis, who is standing in the inside, and also then give to the balabayis who is standing on the inside. Noitel me'oni, He's able to take from the Ani who's standing in the Rishus HaRabim and give from the Iskupa to the Ani who's standing in the Rishus HaRabim. Ask the Gemara, Hai Iskupa Mai. This Iskupa, what is its status? Ilema Iskupa Rishus HaRabim. So if you want to say this Iskupa has the status of Rishus HaRabim, so let's say we're talking about where the person has, he's standing on this Iskupa, and on the other end of the iskupa, let's say, is a mavui, and the and and the the other side of the iskupa is the rishus harabim. So if he's standing the iskupa, and the iskupa has a different rishus harabim, so then noitel mi balabayis. How can he take from the balabayis who's in the rishus hayochid? Hamapik mi rishus hayochid the rishus harabim. He's making a hoitzah from rishus hayochid to rishus harabim. The Ella Scupa Rishus Ayochi, but you'll say it has a status of the Mavui that's inside of it. Well, then that's a Din Rishus Ayochi. 
noiter mina ani hakam ma'ayom mishal rabim l'shusa yochid. Then he's going to be then entering. He's going to take in from the shusa rabim into the shusa yochid, making hot, making a hachnasa that way. Ella, you must say askuba bekarmelis. Rather, it's a skupa has a din, a status of a karmelis. It's not a rishus arab, it's a rishus yochid. It's a din de rabbonon, a rishus de rabbonon. Noitel v'noisen lechat chila as the gemara. Can you still take and give either from the rishus arabim or from the rishus yochid back and forth lechat chila? Soy sof isru amia isa. Nonetheless, at the end, it's going to be an isa de rabbonon. And here it says in our statement that you're allowed to do that even lechat chila. Take from the balabais or give to the balabais. Take from the ani or give to the ani. Afilu lechat chila. Ella askupa makom betur ba'almahu. Rather, the askupa that we're talking about here is a makom betur. Kigon. The less be dalit al dalit. It's not, doesn't have the width of dal al dalit. And therefore, it's a makom betur. So it's not a rishus harabim, and it's not a rishus hayochi. It's a makam petur that does not have dalit al dalit, and therefore lechatchila you can go ahead and take from the ani and give to the ani who's situated in the rishus ha rabim, or you can take from the balabais and give to the balabais from this iskupa who's situated in the rishus ha yochid. Vechiho dechi also ravdimi, and similarly. This that Rav Dimi came from Bavel, Omar Rabbi Yochanan, he said in the name of, when he came to Bavel from, from Eretz Yisrael, he said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Mokom she'ein bo dalet al dalet fochim, muter levnei v'shuz ha-yochid, levnei v'shuz ha-rabim, lekatef alov, u'bilva shelo yachlifu. He said that indeed, a Mokom that is not dalet al dalet, this is kupa that we're talking about, Lichatchila, it's mutter for those who are standing in the Rishus Harabim to then place their load on this iskupa. And it's mutter for those who in the Rishus Hayachi to place their load on the iskupa. Ubilvashali yachlifu, so long as they don't switch. Meaning to say that the one who is on the Rishus Harabim, he cannot put his load on the iskupa and then stand, go to the Rishus Hayachi and then pick up his iskupa. Because that would be considered to be similar to a person who's then carrying from one Rishus to another Rishus, and therefore that would be also Midra Bonan. Omar Mar, Ubilvash lo yitol mi balabayis v'noisen lo oni, me oni v'noisen lo balabayis. The last statement of this b'raith that we quote on the Avvav Amir Aleph about the Dalai Rishu Yois on Shabbos says the following, so long provided that he doesn't take from the balabayis, the one who's standing on the iskupa, and he gives it to the ani who is standing in the rishus harabim. And vice versa, you cannot take from the ani who's standing in the rishus harabim, the nois in the balabayis, and give it the object to the balabayis in the rishus hayochi. Vim notal v'nosan shloish dem peturin. But if he did do that, he would take, let's say, from the balabayis who is standing in the shusa yochid, and then take the object from him and give it to the ani in the shusa rabim. Then all three of them would be potter. Says the Gemara with the following question: If that's true, then leimat they have it to yufta the rava. Let's say that this is going to be a kasha on rava. The Omar rava. What is the refutation? Because Rav has said, Hamaavir chayfetz mitchilas dalid l'soif dalid b'shus arabim, that a person who transfers an object from the beginning from to, from the beginning of a place of b'shus arabim at four 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 amos in the b'shus arabim, afabisha eviru derech alov chayev, even though that he carried it and it bypassed over himself. He's going to be chayiv, meaning to say that when he carried this object, he picked it up higher than Asara Tfachim, and then he reached his place four dollars um, four almost later and put it down. So Rava says that he's chayiv. And over here we're saying that if you go through a Mokom Petur, then it's potter. It's true, it's also, but it's not chayiv achatos. So this is a refutation on Rava. Says the Gemara, no, hasam loy noch, hacha noch. Over there, the reason why it's exempt, it's potter, in the case of the iskupa, is because when he took it, 
he took the object from, let's say, the Balabais who was standing in the Shizha Yochid, and then he placed it down. Then he gave it over to the Oni who was situated in the Shus Harabim. But over here in the case of Rava, Rava is talking a place where he didn't stop in between. And therefore he went from the beginning of the Dalar Amos to the end of the Dalar Amos. Although it's true he picked it up higher than Asar Tfachim where there's no Rishus Harabim. But nonetheless he ultimately put it down in the Rishus Harabim Dalit Amos later, and therefore there was an Akira and a Hanacha making a Havara Dalit Amos in the Rishus Harabim.